Hello, my name is Peter Sir, and I'm delighted to be here to read a few poems, albeit digitally, um, from my latest collection, the, the Gravity Wave. I'd much I have to say I'd much rather be in in Cork at the Cork International Poetry Festival. Uh, it's one of my favourite places to to read, um, and I'd also have, would have liked to visit the Farm Gate uh, Cafe, uh, which is one of my favourite places to eat. So I should say that I'm very pleased to have been awarded the the Farm Gate. Um, Café National Poetry Award for uh, the Gravity Wave. I'm actually I'm just back from a couple of weeks in South Kerry, and I, I always feel when I come back from there that kind of my consciousness has has, has uh, expanded, has been expanded by the sights and sounds and smells of mountains, sea, and and, and fresh air, and you know so much about this kind of lockdown and its aftermath has been about, I don't know, trying to find ways to unlock the imagination or to enter some kind of reliable well of the creative impulse. Um, so every bit of what I do has been inspired by um, that part of the world. So I thought I'd maybe begin with um, two poems set there. Um, the first one is called uh, At Stake Fort. And at Stake Fort, Stake Fort in um, Kerry is is this huge, possibly Iron Age or a bit later enclosure at, at the head of of this valley, and it's it's a spectacular um, monument. Um, but it's in a field uh, surrounded by sheep, and the farmer who owns the field um, is an, obviously an astute businessman. So he kind of does a, he tries to charge money for for um, to get in and, and see it. So anyway, this one's called At Stake Fort. At Stake Fort. The sign on the gate asks for a coin to compensate our trespass. Maybe he's right, whoever owns it. Maybe the place is absolutely his. The millennia sing in his blood. He wakes to ghost cattle lowing from deep inside the fort. Something's here. Some long possession holds the stones and climbs the steps to walk the walls and peer from mountain to sea and back. Is there a ship? A hawk? Has a dragonfly somehow landed on a blade of grass? A stag's breath slipped in to haunt the valley. The watched sun goes down. The dark creeps to the fort, setting off horns, alarms, finds us lying weightless in the ring's dead centre. Something's here in the shadows, drawing across the stone's giant press. The trespass, our bodies lightening the grass, lifted from it, held as if by a thousand fingertips. And... The second one, I don't know, it's a, it's a kind of an attempt to escape the sort of um, digital prisons that we often end up in, um, with the, the sheer kind of busyness of, of our lives. And it's called Nudge. OK, so this is my second attempt to read Nudge because the digital world got its revenge there by switching itself on as I was reading the first one. Um, so, Nudge. And then I'd walk up the deviceless avenue, notified by trees, alerted by fuchsia, Montbrecia. I'll step over the stream, touched by dragonflies, woken by reeds. I'll be a drudge, a bore in the industry of the air, press my face against the grass till it lets me in. The sky will remind me. The mountains recognise me. The clouds will measure my breaths. And when I've fallen over the edge, the tasks will unattach and snore beside me till I wake to warbler, corncrake, head in the sedge, never so delicately nudged. And uh, maybe I'll just I'll go back to the beginning um, of, of the book. The book begins with a set of... Um, Short poem, sonnets, I suppose. Um, and the first one is called The Now Slice, which is 
a thing in in um, physics, a kind of a description of of time. Um, in the notion that we inhabit our different sort of slices of time, um, so that we can be, somebody maybe um, billions of years away from us can be enjoying the same slice of time that that we are now. If you can get your head around that, you're better than than, than I am. Um, but also, I'd been reading um, Homer, the Odyssey, uh, a lot, so that kind of slipped into it as as well. So all kind of stuff coming together. Also, my daughter was starting secondary school. Um, so all that just kind of came in. The now slice. Breakfast is over. You've gone to the hard world. Ulysses struggles from a speaker, nearly dead. He flails in the waves, a towering headland staring him down. Where's help here? The floor turns stone, the kitchen Mycenaean. The dog sprawls on the couch, lost in a dream of toast and cats. A fruit fly climbs a jar to dangerous honey. I lift my cup and a star explodes. A meteor crashes into the moon. A blue alien looks out along his slice of time. He's going to school, maybe. When he comes back, the future will already be over. Only Ulysses will still be here. He's found a riverbank now and friendly leaves. Athena rains down sleep on his eyes. Um, and I spend a lot of time, we spend a lot of time um, in the Phoenix Park. And so this one is set there, it's just called Deer Phoenix Park. How many are there? I glance like an actor counting the audience. Are we the set they're looking at? We don't seem to have entered yet, or they don't see us. The road is beyond them. I slow the car. I don't want to count deer, I want to count in deer, antler, Forest, eyes, stillness, speed, hide. I'd like this currency to fall between us where we step invisibly from the car, slipped from ourselves, to kneel, grasslit and concentrated, close to a road that keeps wobbling and clarifying, like the rim of the world or the end of speech. And... I'd like to continue with um, a poem, I suppose it's a, it's, it's a homage to Sappho, um, to one of her most famous poems, um, the so-called Anactoria poem. Anyway, here it is. Um, it's called Some Say. Some say a fleet of ships Some streets in May. Some say blood, some wine. A summer sky. Some say hawk in flight, some oak entrenched. But I, I think of you. Leave the torn world to brood and stew. If Helen can do it, so can I. Without turning, without a thought or turning back. Forget ships, horses, muscled soldiery. There's this. There's you swooping from the air, pinion to the ground, my own hawk, tree, quick ship gliding to its shimmering coast. Some say moorgrass, marigold, some a kestrel hovering above the marshland. Some say silk, some snow, dusting the city pavement, the green chill of winter meadows. But I... I say it's cold outside. These landscapes will return. It's the room that havers, the bed that will abandon us. Some say run, some stay. But I, I think of your hands combing the grasses. Your lips fly, your heart pulses, dithers. Some say earth, some sky. Some hesitate, some fly. But I, but I. 
Um, and I'll maybe finish with the title poem. I uh, call the gravity wave, and again, this one is inspired, if you like, by um, the notion of, of of gravity or gravitational waves caused, I suppose, ripples in space time caused by great events that happened billions of years in the past, maybe um, two black holes colliding or supernovae uh, exploding, and the notion that these are still measurable traces of, of these fantastic and cataclysmic events are still um, coming to us. So I suppose I'm kind of applying that to a human situation, maybe just the idea that something uh, something in us um, continues um, to ripple outward uh, across time. So here it is anyway. And thanks again for, for listening. Um, the gravity wave. Where next for this gust printing itself on your dress, catching the rim of your hat, riffing in the strands of your hair? Maybe the same place as this single breath, this turning of neck towards neck, this widening of the eyes and whatever loosens behind soul stretch, spirit drift that have left us and gone pouring down the millennia, rippling, thinning, fainter by the second, but lodged forever, infinitesimally measurable, where two particles conversing almost falter, almost alter as they register the microns micron, the hair's breath's whisper of what passed between us. Thanks very much.